All right, let's I'm get started. I'm going to give a shout out to Jennifer Cox. She's one of my TCU cohort folks. So oh, welcome. She joined us. She is. She's on the webinar. Woohoo! Glad you're here. All right, I will introduce myself. My name is English Runyon. I am a curriculum developer at ListenWise, and I'm also a proud former Texas teacher. I taught middle school and high school ELA. And I'm really excited to introduce my friend and mentor, Melissa Rincon. She's a principal at William James Middle School in Fort Worth ISD. Thank you for joining us today, Melissa. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. All right, for those of you who are not familiar with ListenWise, I'm just going to give a quick rundown and we're also going to learn a little bit about the research and ex um, experience listening to a ListenWise podcast. And then we'll really be hearing Melissa's perspective about how ListenWise is a good fit for Texas and supports TEKS. So what is ListenWise? We have approximately 2,800 nonfiction podcasts for grades 2 through 12. Um, we have a brand new ELD or English language development lesson library of lessons that are really great for emerging, emerging bilinguals. And we're TEKS aligned. We have lessons for ELA, English language development, social studies, STEM. We also have current events that are published every single school day. And we address all four strains of literacy. So reading, writing, listening, and speaking. We also have a ton of curriculum resources to support instruction, things like auto scored quizzes, teacher's guides, um, tons of different kinds of scaffolding supports, listening organiz organizers, comprehension discussion questions. Um, ListenWise is a tool that I really wish that I'd had in the classroom. It would have made it, it would have cut the time I spent after school or before school in half looking for the perfect thing to support my students that they would be engaged in and um, just excited about. So if you would like to learn more about ListenWise and try it out, um, you can always sign up for a, a free 30-day trial at listenwise.com. Okay, so a little bit of research to share before we get into our discussion about the TEKS and ListenWise. Um, but there is considerable evidence that for the majority of children, comprehension of printed um, language, so reading comprehension, lags behind comprehension of spoken language well past the third grade. And we know this. We know how babies learn to talk. They take a lot in before they start speaking and definitely before they start reading. Um, so if we're able to give students quality things to listen to, they'll be able to take it in and maybe um, more easily reach um, grade level materials than they could reading. Um, and for ELs, this is especially true. Um, the earliest two stages of second language acquisition are just kind of like when everyone is learning how to speak. It's a silent period. They take in language. They might understand a lot more than they can read, a lot more than they can speak. So we still need to be supporting them as much as we can. Um, a best practice is emphasizing time spent on listening and absorbing new language. Um, so using audiovisual tools, um, using music. And so ListenWise is great to support students. Um, it's an equity lever so that any student is able to have access to grade level material in a way that they would be better successful in understanding. So let's do some listening. Um, we're going to listen to the podcast Searching for the Next Killer Virus today. This was, Melissa, this was actually your first experience with ListenWise. Yes. So I, I love, um, letting educators hear this podcast because it's a perfect example of how listening is so immersive. We're getting audio input to our brain, but also our brain is able to help us better imagine what we could see, taste, smell. It activates all of our five senses. We call this auditory scene analysis. So listening can really take us somewhere. And so today I'm taking you to Southeast Asia where scientists are looking for that next killer virus. And as you listen, I would like you to close your eyes and really pay attention to the details that you get that 
are able to help you imagine what you could see, smell, taste. And in the chat, I'd love if you could add those details that really stood out. And then Melissa, I'd also looking forward to hearing your perspective of what really stands out to you after we take a listen. Sorry about that. In the time I was talking, when my tabs went away. Okay, again, as you're listening, close your eyes and keep track of those sensory details that um, apply to all of your five senses, not just your, not just your sense of hearing. That have lots of crazy animals like this have lots of crazy viruses. Olive Oil is trying to find out what viruses are inside these animals, so he's trying to catch them. Ooh, oh, that's what it'll sound like when an animal goes in there. Olive Oil's team has set up metal traps on the ground and up in the trees. Okay, just don't step on that trap. These traps are set up to trap rodents and small mammals. What he really wants to catch is a bat. Yeah, to the bat nets we go. There are a dozen nets strung like huge spider webs high in the trees. The nets are open, the traps are baited, are baited and open. The rain is coming, unfortunately, so. So now we just wait. Now we wait. For the bats to go hunting and fly into one of these nets. Then we can take their blood and look for new viruses. Michaeline! We got one. Oh, there it is. Wow, he's so cute. Oh, look at his wings. Little puppy face. Little puppy face. Short-nosed fruit bat. Short-nosed fruit bat. So he's going into a bag. Which he can breathe through. The bag helps keep the bat calm as we carry him to a makeshift lab near the trapping site. So we're going to take the bat out of the bag? He really does look like a puppy, and he wraps his wings around his body like a little blanket. Oh, there he is. But this bat isn't something you want to snuggle with. Just careful. This little guy, these bats, are arguably one of the most dangerous animals in the world. Take your time. Okay. While you were adding what detail stood out to you that you heard auditorily, but you could easily imagine with one of your other five senses. Um, I wanted to point out that this is a Listen Wise current event. Current events are published every school day. Um, current events come with a synopsis, a picture. You can create a lesson if you click here. Um, but what I really wanted to point out right now is our interactive transcript. We heard it at an original speed, but you could click slow to hear it about 20% slower. And then we always have our interactive transcript down here. So as we hear the words, we see um, them change to blue as they go across the screen. We also have assignment resources for all of our current events, which include listening comprehension questions and discussion themes. All right. I would love to hear some details that stood out to some people in the chat. And Melissa, what cut, what um, caught your attention? I, I took some notes. Um, I could see um, the nets like spider webs over the trees and then um, the bat's wings wrapping himself like a blanket that created a great visual for me. I could hear um, the crickets and bugs in the background of the story and heard the trap clamp. You could hear wind in the trees and That always kind of takes me a bit when I hear that trap. Yes, and then um, you know, they mentioned several times the rain is coming and I felt like just between the sun, the, the what you could hear in the story and then the way they were describing what they could see. I could almost feel the mugginess of the air before the rain started and hear, you know, what it would like, what it was like to be in that forest um, before they um, caught the bat. Yeah, I almost feel a sense of like, like it's humid. The sound of bugs like that, yeah. you see, summer, it's kind of wet and sticky. 
Um, okay. I hope that you all, ooh, I like Deb. Thank you so much. It felt like a 360 experience. That was, that's what we think. It's very immersive. And I always, about this current event, I was a student who is definitely more social studies and English focused. Maybe it's my name. I don't know. Um, but I kind of turned out, turned off with science and math. I would have not liked to read an article about finding the next killer virus in a place across the world, but listening to it was really engaging and did make me want to listen more and learn more. All right, now we're turning it over to you, Melissa, for a while and getting your principal's perspective on ListenWise and why you chose to have it at your campus. Um, well, I'm going to start by sharing, you know, as, as a principal and no matter, I don't know what everyone's role is, but we have so many um, vendors and ed tech and resources coming at us in our inbox, over the phone, um, presenting at conferences that, you know, um, it it's hard to look through uh, the chatter and the noise to find products that are really helpful for students. And so I want to start by saying I had trust um, when English reached out to me. One, I knew English. Um, I knew her before she was a teacher. She was actually a student intern um, way back in the summer of 2011 when I was working for the new teacher project for a summer. And I was still a teacher in the classroom, an aspiring administrator, and English was in my class. And I was so impressed with her instructional design then and her ability to lesson plan that I went to my principal and said, you better hire this girl. We have an English vacancy and her name is English. And so um, it was, it, that's how I got to know English first was as an educator. And I actually was lucky enough. We taught the same content together and we're colleagues and kind of in a mentee mentor relationship um, for my last year in the classroom in 2011 and 12. Um, when I left the classroom, we stayed connected and I followed her story. And, you know, um, you may have heard me say some folks from my doctoral cohort are here. I followed English being a lifelong learner. She went to Harvard. She got married, she had children, um, got her master's in instructional design. And so when she said, I really think you should look at this, um, just having that trust and knowing her story a little bit and knowing um, that we both our hearts were both grounded in that classroom when we were working on the north side of Fort Worth trying to educate kids um, who, who were using English as a second language and trying to navigate that world. We, um, that, that, the trust factor was huge for me and played a huge part in me wanting to take a very close look at ListenWise. I also had trust that English would not be bringing anything that wasn't instructionally sound to my doorstep because she knows what kind of teacher I was. So when we um, looked at it and were able to partner and look closely, I saw how closely it would pair with the goals that we have at our campus. Do you want me to segue into our campus now? <laughs> yeah, I would. And thank you, <laughs> Melissa. And also the kind of teacher I was and I believe that I still am. I, um, I'm picky and listen wise, checks every box for me. Um, okay, about William James. So it's my third year leading William James as principal and it is a joy and privilege to be here every single day. I will share that when I took over the principalship at William James, it was rated the lowest performing middle school in Fort Worth. We had an F rating and we were at 51 and that was in, in 2019. Um, our students were not performing well. And a huge piece of why they were not performing well, um, we are 97% economically disadvantaged and 67% emergent bilingual, meaning that, you know, two out of every three students in a classroom, native language is not English. And so we have to design instruction that meets them where they're at. And, um, you know, one thing that I love, our previous superintendent always said, our students are not deficit minded their assets to be invested in and so we're really looking to invest in our assets i'm proud to say that in 2022 um, we are no longer an f-rated campus we're still not rated we missed that rating by 2.8 points and so we really honed in this um this summer in our leadership workshops on what are our areas of opportunity and again 
knowing that we have 67% emergent bilingual student population and looking at our TELPA scores for 2022. And you'll see up here that pie graph in yellow, 56% of our students, even though we had tremendous growth, stayed the same TELPAS rating. Um, they did not improve or regress, they stayed the same. Meaning the instructional experiences we're getting, giving to them during the seven and a half hours they're in school, we're not really hitting those growth in reading, listening, speaking, and writing that they need to to propel themselves forward with great growth um, forward. And so that's our area of opportunity. And that's really where we started looking what instructional supplements and resources could we use to really hone in on that area of opportunity to move, to turn that 56% down to something like 20 um, instead of you know a huge chunk of yellow, let's have a huge, huge chunk of green. And um, and so this is how we landed on ListenWise, really looking at what our what our data said and was telling us, and what would fit within that. Can you just um, speak to that kind of timeline? It was a quick turnaround. You saw it, you tested it, and you guys are ready to go. So just walk us through that. So um, we we started seeking resources in the spring of 2022. Um, English came and did a lunch and learn for our ELA and language center teachers. And the teachers themselves were very responsive and said, hey, we uh, really think that this is the resource we wanna go with. Um, we had a 60 day trial that teachers could use and implement within their class and our department chair and um, our language center teachers were very vocal that our students were responding to it and helpful. Um, we envisioned that we would probably be pursuing this compared to other items out there, which I think we'll talk about a little bit. Um, I just felt like it, it was the strongest um, resource we could possibly find that would um, be a supplement to what our great teachers were already doing. And so we bought every student a set of headphones expecting that we were going to move forward with ListenWise. Um, we were able to secure um, approval from our district this summer to utilize ListenWise. And um, I kind of walked uh, English's co cohort through the uh, vendor approval process and how to, how to get through that so that we could um, purchase for use in the fall of 2022. And then now we're moving toward implementation where we have an expectation that um, once a week in each content, a ListenWise article or a ListenWise podcast is utilized to supplement instruction within the 50 minute instructional block in each core content. Thank you, Melissa. And now we'll hear from one of the teachers at your campus. Is it ELA department head, correct? Yes. Awesome. Hi, my name is Rachel Morgan. I teach seventh grade ELA and serve as the English department chair for William James Middle School. Um, I'm looking forward to using Listen Wise in my class as a, a bank of short pieces that could help be paired or tied to other selections that we read in class. I would utilize this to help improve my students with their listening, speaking, and reading comprehension. Um, I feel like we could also use this program with other contents, specifically with social studies and current events. Science could also benefit. And more importantly, our language center could really utilize this program with the tools and resources that are targeted to help support English language learners. I'm looking forward to using ListenWise and hope we're, hope we're able to get this program for our campus. What you have, what you have. Hi, my name is Rachel Morgan. I teach. Um, as we move on, now we're going to talk about the <clears throat> the benefits of ListenWise in terms of pairing language and literacy across content. Because um, although I was an ELA teacher, I really do feel like all teachers are reading teachers and need to incorporate literacy best practices. Okay, so this is just a sample 
um, standards aligned lesson. So if you have a listen wise account, this is a standards aligned lesson that um, is paired with Teak. So at the bottom of the um, the website for this lesson, you would be able to see what Teak's align. And Melissa, can you kind of walk us through when you're just looking at this snippet, um, the synopsis, a few discussion questions, and then the external materials that we have linked, what stands out to you as supporting instruction? So our campus has done a lot of work in standards alignment in the past year, and we can attribute all of our growth points um, with our accountability ratings to focusing and being very tight on standards alignment. And so one thing that I love about ListenWise and seeing its praises to um, it, you know, reading the synopsis about, you know, Jacqueline Woodson's novel before the ever after, um, we have a little summary here, but we also see it's written in the voice of a 12 year old boy. So I know I'm going to get some voice in there. Um, I'm also going to get a connection to current events. His father was a star football player, but now has a degenerative brain disease. So my brain is already thinking, you know, um, CTE and, you know, the, um, the, um, you know, current events of, you know, the football player that was put back in the game a couple of weeks ago. So I'm thinking about tie-ins there. And then as I look down into, you know, in Texas, making sure that we are supporting anything we're looking at um, with evidence from the story and our own ideas. I see that the discussion themes already have that as a piece to look at. And then also, um, you know, doing the brainstorming piece um, below that. So that's embedded into each um, preview of a story. And then the other piece that I just love and I think is, um, makes it so tight with alignment and the ability for teachers to just implement in. When I look at the external materials on the right, um, ListenWise has already done the, the pre-work to pair a text. Um, if you are in Texas, you know on STAR, there's the paired text selection and making connections across multiple forms and genres of text is very important, especially in ELA. I see that there's already um, some information that takes the students externally to information about what CT is for students who need to draw that additional connection. And then um, I love that it exposes students to sports writing and creative nonfiction and types of sports stories. So, you know, my teacher brain is already like, thinking how can we make this relevant? Who can we make cub reporters and send to the football game? And right. that's exactly where my mind went too. Yeah. Such yeah. A cool and so um, I, you cool. know, I love it that it's such a great launch um, pad for lesson planning and for teachers to really be able to package lessons in a way that our standards align and impact our students and give them that relevance and background knowledge that they might need. Yeah, thanks, Melissa. Other things that um, stand out to me is that Woodson discusses her descriptive writing process. She discusses mm -hmm. how she likes to show, not tell, using comparison. Um, and then also thinking from um, a 10th grade pre-AP teacher, this novel is written in verse and she explains why she had a purpose for her form, which is just so good to get in a, I think this is like a seven minute, lesson. Awesome. And then here we see we highlighted some of these same things that we talked about um, on a fifth grade teak and we know those teaks build so similar um, we're expected to teach similar things all the way up to 12th grade. But there's evidence of listening because obviously it's audio, speaking, we have discussion questions, we, we want to facilitate academic conversation, and then reading and then those writing prompts. So all parts of literacy are woven in and then some of the other things that we just discussed. Okay, um, another thing I'd like to share <clears throat> is our, we're really, really excited about all the work we put in and the launch of our new ELD library. So these are um, lessons that we've chosen to um, create with more scaffolding for English language learners. So they cover content that's 
commonly taught across ELA, social studies, and science. So this is an example of a social studies one right now, the first cities. All of these lessons have a content objective and a language objective as a suggestion. Um, so right now they're very general, but student, but teachers, based on what their needs are, can make them more specific. So the content objective here is students will be able to demonstrate understanding of how and why the first cities developed. The language objective is students will be able to identify early human activities before and after the development of first cities. And I would probably add a more specific language form there. I would say using verb forms like past tense, progressive, present tense. So I think that this is a really good reminder for teachers that are focused on their content that there are still things that students need to be learning about language forms and functions to be able to respond and explain what they've learned. So they're describing actions, the actions of these early humans. So verb forms, they're talking about sequence event in a sequence of events what happened before cities, after, and then learning how those differences in actions created those cities. People could do different things when they had a city than when they, than before. Our ELD teacher, our ELD teacher's guides um, for those lessons are not, it's not just the content language objectives, they're giving suggestions to do before, during, and after listening. So best practices in literacy. Um, during listening, we break it down into having three close listens because the majority of our, our podcast are three to six minutes long. That's very doable. And we break down those listens by um, listening for language and vocabulary first, then second, listening for um, language and content. And then the third listen is mostly geared on content. And within each of those listens, we have a different listening protocol, a listening organizer activity, whatever we feel will help students listen more strategically for those purposes. One of my favorite parts is engaging in relevant content. Um, listen wise just I feel like has what you need when you need it and we'll see a little more about that now. Okay. 10 purposes for listen wise lessons. So Melissa, this is kind of what you were talking about earlier. Um, you felt like listen wise was a step above because it wasn't focused on just one thing. You could see implement implementation opportunities in so many ways. Can you speak to that a bit? I do want to speak to that because I think um, what what I think is most remarkable about lesson wise is that um, it is a product that can help all students, um, but it specifically can target and help close gaps for our ELL students, which I've mentioned at the beginning. I can share that when we looked at other programs um, that could provide supplemental resources and instruction to our ELLs, so much of it was test prep type activities where they get on a computer, they put on headphones, they listen to something being read to them, and then they click, 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 answer some questions, or they record into their speaker um, their interpretation. And it that is great. Our students definitely need practice for TELPAS and end of year assessments. However, um, I was really looking for something that teachers could use that would lift their lessons in that relevancy category that might um, spark an interest in a student's um, background knowledge or where they come from that would help them with that real world connection, um, which it hit all the boxes for that for me. And also to help some of my teachers, you know, I'm on a campus that has 14 brand spanking new teachers across all of our contents. Um, that would help them with some of that literacy instruction that um, we know our new teachers struggle with and some of our veteran teachers need a little refresher on every now and then. Um, and so it really does um, hit that, especially when it comes to vocabulary, being able to make sure that um, listening and literacy skills and that BDA reading process is carried throughout. And then also just, you know, facilitate that love of learning and deep understanding that our students know, we know that they have, um, but really resonating with them and getting their involvement and their choice in the lesson. Um, I could just see this being utilized 
um, both as you know, mini lesson, model lesson, small group, letting students have some free choice. Um, I know we're going to get to the weird news area at some point, but you know, I think there's it, there's just a huge amount of possibilities of how to use this on a campus, and it is not limited to just test prep or you know a workbook. It it really allows for collaboration, it allows for connection, and it allows for deep and authentic learning. All right. All right. So um, Melissa mentioned weird news. Unfortunately, we won't get to talk much about that, except it's one of my favorite features of ListenWise. So like I said, ListenWise <clears throat> publishes five current events a week. Um, Monday is more of a hard news story, sometimes a feature news story. Tuesday is specifically for our second through fifth, sixth grade. It still works probably for all students, but we call it kid news. Um, it's a lower um, listening lexile and reading lexile level. Um, Wednesday, we have a current event that has a quiz that's uh, auto graded. Um, Thursday is our weird news story. So there's a less than 30 second um, podcast that we pull out um, academic vocabulary that's used within the questions. And then Friday, we have a debate. And they're always very interesting topics that will engage students. And so right now, we have an example of the debate. Do the risk of airdrop outweigh the benefits? And as I was talking with Melissa last week, I might have been listening to a, a conversation she was having with a, a uh, colleague a little too closely and I was like ah we have a story for your situation so Melissa you want to give a a little bit of that so um let me just say that I am principal of a middle school and as much as I love our students sometimes they make really poor decisions and we had a little situation where um, technology outsmarted us we had a picture of it should not have ever seen the light of day air dropped to um pretty much any student within airdrop range who had that available on their cell phones. And so, um, you know, in order to keep that from spreading around the campus and um, continuing to um, harass and harm one of the students who was unfortunately pictured in the picture um, that was airdropped without her knowledge or consent everywhere, um, we, we really had to think quickly and get lots of people involved. And so it was a learning experience for me. And I English overheard another director calling saying, what did you do in this situation? Because we have the same thing going on at one of my campuses. And so um, sharing just a little bit about that. And then she goes, oh, by the way, we have a story about that. And so um, it could definitely be a listening moment for our kids and also, um, you know, it's just funny how relevant um, what's happening in the world ties into our campus. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's another neat story that we we have um, as a part of the curriculum team. I'm a part of um, curating the podcast that we that we add to our site, and so we. Um, use high quality sources and it's something that we do every single week um i feel like i'm in education but also i'm getting to be a journalist which is really fun um and melissa this is a real text from august 7th reached out to me and i'll let you talk to her talk to them about that so it was hot here in texas and i was driving home from planning um pd at my office for teachers who were coming back the next day and you know when you're planning the beginning of a year and planning your PE experiences you're thinking about all these things that you know you want to implement and what you can say to teachers and I heard this great um had this NPR driveway moment um where I heard this this person these two writers talking about um the link between basketball failure and writing and I was captivated. I wouldn't go into my house. I wanted to listen to the whole thing. And um, I immediately wrote it down. And then I um, went and found the transcript on NPR and said, oh my gosh, this is, I'm going to do a PD about growth mindset with our faculty using this little clip. And um, I also am like, oh my gosh, I have to tell English about it. So I texted her and, and you'll see it you know, on the left of the screen. 
please do a lesson wise lesson on this amazing conversation because I think it would be so great for students also. And um, the, the thing that gave me confidence when she responded, you know, Monday, because not everyone works on Sundays. I, um, I'm trying not to do that myself. Um, when she responded Monday at noon, she's like, oh my gosh, it's already on our screening list for today. And I, that actually helped solidify my confidence in ListenWise, the fact that someone out there was curating and listening to the stories. Probably working on Sunday. <laughs> Maybe working on Sunday. Um, to prepare and find this content that's really engaging and meaningful for, for not just students, right? Like I found this for my teachers who were trying to lift and support um, through this very, very important work that we do. And like, I was like, man, that's just refreshing that there's someone out there doing that work and um, it's not, and they're so plugged into it that it's already on their curation list. It's not based on me. It's not based on my recommendation. It's not based on me going out and finding it. Um, it's there. And I, that just gave me confidence in the team and the product that they're putting out to our students and staff. Okay. Um, and now we have an example of just the purpose of extending learning and then providing representation. So this is um, a recent current event. Um, it's called the Tales of Two Schools in Uvalde and it talks about the background um, of Uvalde and in terms of segregation um, and making schools as good as they could be, specifically Rob Elementary. So Melissa, what was your takeaway from this story? And then I love that connection you had, that you how you would have used it in the classroom. So English played this for me when we were planning and I was listening to it. And it, it tells the story of a teacher um, who, who comes from a Hispanic background and he was the only brown Hispanic teacher in um, the Uvalde School District back in the early 70s. And it talks about the great, um, effort he put into improving his school. Everything from planting trees uh, to improve the landscape um, along the front of Rob Elementary so that um, it wasn't, I'm sorry, it wasn't Rob Elementary, but along the front of his school um, so that his school would look like the other schools in Uvalde where most of the white students went. Um, to really building relationships with his students and connecting to his community. And he had great praise for that and was very popular among the community and students and staff until um, he started pursuing his graduate degree. And then kind of the principal began to feel threatened and um, really um, documented him and tried to fire him through the school board meeting and non-renew his contract. And it talks about how the entire community railed against that and came together to support him. And it kind of did this fast forward look, you know, 40, 50 years later, how tall those trees have grown and grown in front of the school, how the teacher is still a part of the community. And it's kind of a retrospective to um, the deep divisions that happen in Uvalde and how that kind of sets the scene for the current reality and how they responded to the tragedy. The, the connection that I made, I taught um, in a 98% Hispanic school. And, um, you know, part of our curriculum every January was the I Have a Dream speech by Martin Luther King. And I immediately thought of my students who, while we were studying this, and of course are very interested in the civil rights movement, one question I would get every year is, well, what about Hispanic people, miss? Like what, where were they in this civil rights movement and, and what were they doing and, and what about us? And so it was very, I, I thought this would be a great if I were still in the classroom, when I got to that unit, I would definitely fold this story in to be able to lift more Hispanic voices into the civil rights movement and share the experiences of people. Um, so every student I taught could connect to the movement that we're teaching and the themes that we're exposing students to. So um, I, I think that's a really great example of how ListenWise could be used to supplement um, 
not replace, but supplement the curriculum that's already there in an effort to connect to the experiences our students have today. Yeah. One of my favorite things is just imagining how could I have used this? Who can I send this to? Because I know uh, they're teaching biology and they they always are looking for something to talk about animal a adaptations. I um, find things all the time that I just want to share. Okay, before we end today, I wanted to <clears throat> share some examples of student outcomes from other Texas teachers. So this quotation says, when my class listened to Scared by the Jumbies, it had a quick impact on my students. They almost immediately made connections to other legends and myths from their personal cultures, and everybody wanted to share. They pointed out similarities and differences between them as well. It was a very active conversation. So this is a sixth grade ELA teacher from Waller ISD near the Houston area, and um, obviously, we see that her students were engaged, but they were critically thinking. They were making text to self or audio to self connections and, and having academic conversations. Okay, this next video is from an 11th grade teacher in Clear Creek ISD. And she, well, I'll just play it and let you see what she has to say. One student in particular who, um, He's, you know, he's a really bright young man, but he has made some not so great choices and had some sort of disciplinary trouble this year. Um, and he like kind of really easily checks out a lot of days. Um, and I use, I don't remember the title of it, but one of the, it was an NPR piece about whether or not we should raise the minimum wage. And it, show, it showed like multiple perspectives and how it would affect small business owners. Um, and it was the day that Billy came to observe me or observe the, the use of the resource. And um, he is someone who I, he'll, he'll talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. Pain, it's kind of like painstaking to get conversation going, but he will do it, but he won't talk to like the people in his group or share out loud in class. And that day in response to that, he wrote like almost an entire essay and then read it out loud um, in front of the class while we were discussing and kind of wow. debating wow. whether or not the minimum wage should be raised. Um, so I think for some students, I think hearing it uh, brings it like a step closer to them. Um, and so they're more likely to engage in it. Yeah, gosh, I think we can all imagine a student that we would have just been so excited to see them perk up and participate and be excited about what they were learning. Well, we, we are so happy that you guys were able to join us today. Um, thank you, Melissa, for all your insight. If you have any questions, we'll be here for a little longer and we'd be happy to answer them for you. So feel free to put them in the chat. And then Melissa, just, if you could share one more thing, I have a question for you. Where do you see yourself and William James a year from now, knowing that you would have had a full year implementation of ListenWise? How would you hope to see growth? And what well, growth are you looking forward to seeing? I, I'm really looking forward to seeing our ESL students um, perform well on their end of year assessment. Um, we've set a very ambitious goal to move that 55% of students to stay the same down to 20% stay the same. So that would mean that the majority of our students, 78% um, experience growth and move a level up um, on the TELPUS rating system. For those of you not in Texas, that's Texas's way of tracking and ensuring um, that we are evaluating our English language learners and emergent bilingual students um, progress every year. And so I think we are on track to do that and ListenWise will be a key piece of that. And then, you know, overall as a school, you know, we, we, we had tremendous growth. We grew 18 points um, this last year for accountability purposes. And, you know, my, my campus motto this year is be the bear. And I say that that's like, you know, but our, our campus motto is be the bear for staff, but our leadership team model is, you know, get the B rating. We're going to be a B campus and ListenWise was a very intentional and, um, you know, carved out piece of that strategy in order to get that B.